Hey YouTube, a uh, little uh, update for my regular subscribers and people who have been following along on my Digital Dash project. I've uh, had uh, some downtime the last several weeks, we've not been on the road, and uh, I've been able to work on updating my Digital Dash sending unit. So some of you might recall um, I've been working on removing my analog gauges and switching over to more of a uh, modern digital dash that I can configure and easily add gauges to and things like that. Um, I've put thousands of miles on that system. Um, we've driven it all over. It's worked pretty well. The only issue that I've had with it has been related to Wi-Fi because the system was dependent on Wi-Fi until now. Um, let me explain. So this is my 13 inch tablet that's, um, you know, sits next to the driver here and it's mounted on a, a swiveling base. I'm running real dash software on it and it talks to a sending unit that is has been in prototype stage for quite a while. I've got it sitting over here on top of my dash right now. Um, it's still at the breadboard stage, meaning, you know, for those of you that may or may not be familiar with electronic prototyping, this is how you prototype circuits before you commit to making a circuit board. Um, this is nearly at the stage now where I'm ready to turn it into a circuit board. Um, the improvement that I've been working on recently is the addition of CAN bus support. So CAN bus is a protocol used in modern cars for the ECU, the engine computer essentially to communicate with things in your car like your instrument cluster or your infotainment system. So this removes the issue that I've had with reliability related to Wi-Fi. Um, so this is connected. There's a CAN bus transceiver on here that is connected to this guy. And this is a, a USB CAN bus transceiver that's plugged into the dash there and real dash is picking up on that signal coming from that unit and it's not dependent on Wi-Fi for the engine data. Let me go ahead and start up the bus and uh, show you it in action here. Okay, I uh, just started the bus. Pressure's coming up. As you can see, it's working. <laughs> We're building air pressure. Right now, the only sensors that I have hooked up are coolant and oil. So I have um, warnings configured in here, so if um, 
I'm going down the road and I exceed 195 degrees, I get an audible warning, or if my oil pressure drops, I get an audible warning. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shut this off so you can see it. And the oil pressure will drop. And then I get a big pop-up, and then I get an audible warning as well. Um, so that is, you know, basically the reason for this is to save my engine um, and have modern alerting and instrumentation on a 50-year-old bus. So that's, that's the first part of the update. The second part of the update is that one of my viewers um, told me about a commercial product that's available that does this that I was not aware of. And so I purchased that product. It's called uh, One Gauge. And I'm going to be installing that unit and testing it out as well. Um, I will still probably use this uh, CAN bus sender for us other systems in my bus. Um, I'm working on a tank level monitor system for my tanks. And these little guys, you know, I can make this in a circuit board for, you know, probably less than $10 or right around $10, maybe, you know, 20 on the high end. Um, so I can very easily add these throughout my bus for monitoring various RV systems in kind of a modular way over CAN bus. Um, let me show you the one gauge. So this is the one gauge unit. Um, it comes with a lot of ports on it um, for hooking up lots of different senders. Um, it has an option for CAN bus support, which I've got here. Um, it's got uh, a GPS board on it. Basically, for those of you that are familiar with Arduino Megas and Arduinos, this is basically a large Arduino Mega breakout board. Um, with kind of modular expandability on it. You know, you can add other options on here for other sort of expansions. And your senders hook up on these screw terminals, you know, all along here. And there's documentation. And the documentation um, tells you, you know, where to hook up your temperature senders and your pressure, oil pressure senders and oil temperature sensors and your exhaust temperature sensors and boost gauges and you know all that sort of stuff and it's commercially supported um, by a guy that you know it's essentially a one-man show um, the cost was pretty significant um, this unit as configured here with the relays and you know the GPS module and the CAN bus module and all this stuff was um, around $570. Um, whereas my DIY option over there on the dash is like, you know, $20, right? Worth of stuff at the breadboard stage. So, you know, there's definitely a place for both. Um, I'm going to use this for my engine, I think. I'm going to go ahead and you know, I'm going to evaluate, I'm going to test it out, hook it up in place of my DIY solution there. Um, because he's already got a lot of this stuff figured out. You know, he's already figured out the different temperature senders and, you know, all the things that you might want to hook up RPM. He's figured out how to do that. His market is primarily hot rods and, um, you know, collector vehicles where you've got, you know, an engine that does not have an ECU or computer, but you want to have a modern dash. Um, that is, that is the market that uh, 
this unit is designed for. So um, I've gone ahead and purchased this. I'm going to give this a shot. Um, I think it'll kind of, uh, you know, catapult my progress quite a bit here because I'll be able to just very quickly um, start adding, uh, uh, sending units and plugging them in and not, you know, I'll, I'll be able to leverage his expertise and, you know, making things work faster. There's, <clears throat> there's another uh, notable difference um, for you DIYers out there. Um, my board is based on ESP8266, which is that little chip right there. Um, you can buy like three of those for $10. Um, I have a 16-bit analog to digital converter on there, ADS-115. The Arduino Megas are about 35 bucks for the board, and um, they only have a 10-bit analog to digital converter. Um, the Arduino Megas do not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi functionality out of the box. Um, so, you know, there is there, there are some trade-offs, right? But um, I'm going to continue working on this because I have a need for this type of thing in, in relation to um, some of the other things I'm doing on the bus with the tank sensors and whatnot. So just to kind of give you a, a bit about what I'm thinking in relation to the tank senders and the other systems on the bus. Um, the boat guys have been doing this for a long time um, on ships and yachts and fishing vessels and all that sort of stuff. Um, they have a system that's similar to what's used in the automotive industry called NMEA 2000. And it incorporates a CAN bus like this. And it also incorporates in the same wires, 12 volt power and ground um, and a shield, I think. So there's, there's four or five conductors and wire that you run and you can tee into this thing anywhere in your bus or in your motorhome and you can add sensors or switches or whatever. So there's, you know, there's T connectors, there's terminators, there's power supplies. There's a whole sort of market around that of things that are ready to go and able to plug into that bus in a, in a marine environment. When I say bus, I mean a data bus. So it makes it a bit easier to extend your system because you can just have this thing running around this one wire and you can just tee into it and you can add things um so that's kind of where i'm going with this that's why i want can bus because i'm going to have a data wire coming from my engine compartment back there all the way up front i will not have a rat's nest of wires you know currently there's a huge rat rat's nest of wires back here behind this dash that's not necessary because you can do all that over just two data wires and a touch screen, you know. Um, you still have to have relays and switches and things, you know, for things you're turning on and off. But um, if I need to add a gauge or add a sender, I can add it in the back of the bus, plug it into the one gauge, and then I can come up here and I can configure my, my real dash to show my new sensor and I won't have to drill any holes or anything like that. So that's that's where I'm going with that. I'm also going to be using these little ESP8266s in my little DIY thing I was showing you um, for tank sensors and lights and other things like that. I already have been using those for my LEDs and, and things like that. Um, they tie into my home assistant system which does require Wi-Fi. Um, it allows you to, you know, create visual dashboards and things like that that are really cool or run on a tablet and whatnot. So that's kind of where I'm going. Um, that's what I've been doing for the last few weeks in my sort of spare time. And uh, 
I got to get all this stuff buttoned up, you know, because we've got a trip coming up here. Here's an example of some of that CAN bus marine wiring um, off of Amazon. This is an Anchor Marine starter kit. Pretty expensive, you know, high-end name brand marine grade stuff. There's a T there. There's a power injector and some terminators there, just so you can kind of get an idea of what that stuff looks like. Okay, today is tomorrow, and uh, I got the one gauge hooked up here. Kind of a rat's nest, uh, don't mind the wires. This is just sitting on my dash because I'm just testing it out. Um, I did go for a drive with it, it does work. Um, I'll go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and show you here. Uh, right now it's, the relay is off, so I have to click this on. I gotta click both these on. We'll start getting some data. Um, it is jumpier than mine was. Um, it's transmitting a lot of data very fast and there's some um, change in that data. So I've already sent the developer an email and asked him to uh, apply some smoothing to that data. But here we'll go ahead and fire it up and let's see what happens here. It's always a little concerning how long it takes that oil pressure to come up, huh? Now look at that. Look at that. that there's no way it's dropping down to 29 or whatever. Oh, my relay went off. Hold on. What's going on there? Oh, it's not... Yeah, okay, it's not sending the signal back to Real Dash to say that the relay's on, but I can see that they're on there. So... Yeah, this actually worked better when I did it before. Um, there's no way the engine is in the 30 degree, 29 degree area. It's probably 60 or 70 degrees outside. I'll go ahead and bring it up here. I do not have the tack hooked up yet, but I will. to get it up into the operating range. The accuracy seems to be increasing as we get it up there. So, you know, I mean, this is a this is a drawback of not having, um, you know, of a closed source system. I can't I can't fix my own problems, right? I'll have to wait for that guy to fix them, but I'm sure he will. Um, I've not reconfigured my uh, oil pressure warning for this yet, um, but as you saw, if you watched the first part of the video, um, I would have got a, a warning about the low oil pressure when that dropped like that. So that's one gauge. Appreciate y'all watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. Thanks.